Steelers Nation, what's up? It's time for another deep dive into the black and gold. The Pittsburgh Steelers are on a roll, sitting at 8-2 and leading the AFC North, but there's always room to get better, and that's exactly what this team is focused on. Today, we've got exciting news about a potential game-changer on defense, Corey Trice Jr., who could make his long-awaited return from injury. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button to show your Steelers pride and subscribe for all the latest updates. Let's get into it. Steelers fans, we know how much a strong defense means to this franchise. It's in our DNA. And this week, there's big news on that front. Corey Trice Jr., a promising young cornerback, is making serious progress in his recovery and could be activated in time for Thursday night's clash against the Cleveland Browns. Let's rewind a bit. Trice has been sidelined since September 22nd, when he suffered a hamstring injury during a punt coverage play against the Los Angeles Chargers. It's been a long road back, but the signs are pointing to a return. Head coach Mike Tomlin gave us some insight earlier this week, saying, We opened the window for Corey Trice last week, and he had a good week of work. He may be available for us this week. We'll see where that takes us. After participating fully in practice last week and again leading up to the Ravens game, Trice appears ready to go. And with the team facing a short week, his availability could provide a crucial boost to the secondary. For those who may not be familiar with Trice's potential, let me break it down. Despite being drafted in the later rounds, Trice has been seen as a player with starter potential at cornerback. Standing tall at 6 feet 3 inches, he brings size, physicality, and athleticism that make him a natural fit for Pittsburgh's aggressive defensive schemes. Unfortunately, injuries have limited his opportunities. Trice missed the entirety of his rookie season in 2023 due to an ACL tear, and his NFL career has been off to a rocky start with this latest hamstring setback. But the Steelers haven't lost faith. The coaching staff continues to see him as a long-term asset who can develop into a cornerstone of the defense. The Steelers' defense has been strong, but the AFC playoff race is heating up, and every advantage matters. Having Trice back could add depth to a secondary that will need all hands on deck against the league's top offenses. With injuries already affecting key players like Alex Highsmith, Ankle, and Joey Porter Jr., Shin, Trice's return would be a welcome relief. Even if he's eased back into action, his presence on the field could help stabilize the unit and give opposing quarterbacks one more thing to worry about. While we're on the topic of Coach Tomlin, let's talk about his leadership style this season. He's been unafraid to publicly critique players when necessary, including new quarterback Russell Wilson. After Wilson threw a risky interception in the end zone during the Ravens game, Tomlin didn't hold back, saying, I just wish Russ hadn't thrown it. This honesty might sound harsh, but it's part of a broader strategy. Tomlin has spent the season building Wilson's confidence after his struggles in Denver, and now that the QB has found some rhythm, Tomlin is pushing him to be even better. It's the same standard he sets for every player, and that's why this team keeps improving. Now, let's quickly look at the team's injury landscape as we head into Thursday night football against the Browns. Here are some updates. Keanu Benton, need day-to-day, -day, but trending towards playing. Joey Porter Jr., shin, also day-to-day, -day, but likely to suit up. Alex Highsmith, ankle week-to-week, -week, doubtful for Thursday. The list of players on injured reserve is long, but the Steelers have shown resilience, finding ways to win despite adversity. Trice's return could be part of a broader resurgence for this defense heading into the postseason push. Steelers Nation, we know what this franchise stands for. Dominant defense. From the Steel Curtain days to modern stars like T.J. Watt, defense has always been our identity. Corey Trice Jr. represents the next generation of playmakers who can carry that legacy forward. His combination of size, speed, and physicality could give the Steelers an edge not just this season but for years to come. And let's be real, what's better than seeing a young, hungry player step up when it matters most? The Browns are struggling this season, sitting at 2-8, but division games are never easy. A win on Thursday would extend Pittsburgh's winning streak to six games and further solidify their position as AFC North leaders. With Trice potentially back in action, the secondary will have an added weapon to handle Cleveland's passing attack. It's a chance for the young cornerback to show what he can do under the bright lights of Thursday night football. Steelers fans, we all know the rivalry with the Ravens runs deep. It's a battle that's as much about pride as it is about points on the board. But things got personal this past week when Ravens legend Bart Scott took aim at our guy Patrick Queen. On ESPN's Get Up last Friday, 
Scott didn't hold back, calling Queen of Judas for leaving Baltimore to join the Steelers in the offseason. Here's what he had to say. Even though we hate the Steelers, we respect them and will never admit that out loud. But every once in a while, you get a Judas. And the Judas is Patrick Queen. He's gonna mess around and find out. Well, Queen didn't take that lying down. After Sunday's thrilling 18-16 win over Baltimore, he fired back on social media, writing, At Bart Scott 57 talk that talk now boy I been that. Yo stats took you 12 years, I'm in year 5 and right there. Queen didn't just let his words do the talking, he let his play on the field speak volumes. The linebacker was everywhere on Sunday, leading the Steelers' defense with 10 tackles, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, and a tackle for loss. The highlight of his game, a crucial forced fumble late in the second quarter. With the Ravens driving, Queen stripped the ball from tight end Isaiah Likely and recovered it himself. That turnover set up a 32-yard field goal by Chris Boswell, giving the Steelers a 9-7 lead heading into halftime. Head coach Mike Tomlin summed it up perfectly after the game. One man's trash is another man's treasure. I'm glad he is on our team. And let's be honest, Steelers Nation, without that play, we might not be celebrating a win today. Queen's journey to Pittsburgh hasn't been without its challenges. After four solid seasons with the Ravens, Queen was expecting to be a cornerstone of their defense for years to come. But when Baltimore opted not to re-sign him, he took it personally. Back in March, Queen inked a three-year, $41 million deal with the Steelers, and since then, he's embraced his role as the villain in the Steelers-Ravens rivalry. Leading up to Sunday's game, he admitted that being passed over by Baltimore gave him extra motivation. It felt like a slap in the face. They didn't even make an offer. But that's fine. I'm here now and I'm where I'm supposed to be. That sentiment came full circle after the game. Instead of harboring anger, Queen said he felt a sense of peace. I woke up this morning and I didn't feel any anger. I just felt content with life and the game and just being where I'm supposed to be at. In the past, I wasn't thinking, God put me in this place for a reason. I was just heated at the situation that occurred. Queen's standout performance is just the latest example of how the Steelers' defense continues to define this team. With stars like T.J. Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick, and Alex Highsmith leading the charge, this unit has become one of the most feared in the NFL. Queen's arrival has only strengthened an already formidable group. His versatility as a linebacker allows the Steelers to get creative with their schemes, and his knack for making game-changing plays has quickly endeared him to fans. As we head into the final stretch of the season, Queen's presence will be critical, especially in tight divisional matchups like Sunday's game against Baltimore. Now, let's talk about Bart Scott's comments one more time. Steelers fans, we've seen this story before. Someone doubts Pittsburgh, and the team responds with a statement win. Scott's words may have been intended to rattle Queen, but instead, they lit a fire under him. And let's give credit where it's due. Queen didn't just prove Scott wrong, he did it with style. His response after the game was a masterclass in standing up for yourself without losing sight of the bigger picture. But what do you think, Steelers Nation? Did Bart Scott's comments cross the line, or was it just part of the rivalry? Let me know in the comments below. With the win over Baltimore, the Steelers improved to 8-2 and solidified their lead in the AFC North. But the road ahead isn't getting any easier. Next up is a Thursday night showdown against the Cleveland Browns, and every game from here on out has playoff implications. Queen's performance on Sunday is a reminder of why this team is so dangerous. The defense is clicking, and players like Queen are stepping up when it matters most. If the Steelers can keep this momentum going, there's no reason they can't make a deep playoff run. Steelers fans, we want to hear from you. Are you excited about Corey Trice Jr.'s potential return? Do you think he can make an immediate impact? And what are your thoughts on Coach Tomlin's tough love approach with Russell Wilson? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And before you go, don't forget to hit that like button to support the channel and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll keep you updated on all things Steelers as we march toward the playoffs. Thanks for tuning in, Steelers Nation. Keep waving those terrible towels, and we'll see you next time. Here we go, Steelers.